Hi guys, I thought you might be interested to see this. Um, this is what appears to be just a standard uh, USB PC floppy drive, except this one's been modified with an Arduino board that's uh, been provided by Rob Smith. And effectively what it does is it presents this floppy drive no longer as a drive, but actually as a, a serial port to the uh, to the machine that we're going to connect it to. In this case, a Raspberry Pi running Linux or Raspberry Pi OS Buster, but it will also work with other platforms. It'll work with uh, Win UAE on Windows as well. But we'll just show you it working on uh, Linux for the time being. So. To, to modify the drive is, is actually quite straightforward. Effectively, you've just got to pop out the screws and in the back of the drive, there's a small PCB. You pop that one out, you replace it with the one from Rob Smith with the Arduino in it. And that is effectively the end of the modification. Let me show you this working. So if I take this drive and I plug it into the Raspberry Pi here, so we're going to use AmiBerry as the, uh, the emulator. Now, AmiBerry is also the same emulator that's uh, used on the A500 Mini except at least at the time of making this video, the version of AmiBerry on the A500 Mini is version 3.3, which doesn't support the Rob Smith Arduino interface, nor does it support the Grease Weasel interface, which is another option. But we're running version 5.0 at the moment, and actually support for both the, uh, the Grease Weasel interface and also for the uh, Rob Smith Arduino floppy interface has been included as part of uh, AmiBerry since I believe version 4.15, but don't quote me. So it's been there for a while, and obviously they've been making improvements with every subsequent release. Now you can see how that's physically connected. If I just zoom this in a little bit so you can see what's going on. On AmiBerry, we've got a number of different configurations, but the one we're going to be using is this one here. So Amiga 500 plus floppy only. So if I load that up, I can show you the configuration settings here. So it's just a, a stock A500, so CPU 68,000, FPU none, CPU speed 7 megahertz. Um, we've got more compatible checked, but actually I don't think that's going to make much difference. And all of this is a little academic in many respects. It could be pretty much whatever machine spec you want in terms of the, uh, the CPU and the RAM. That's not particularly important. Uh, okay, extra chips at 500 plus, again, not too important. ROM, we're using Kickstart 1.3, but I've had successful results with other um, other Kickstart ROMs as well. There may be exceptions, but I definitely know that 1.3 will work fine, so we'll run with that for now. Okay, RAM, we're just using one mega chip RAM, so this is effectively emulating an Amiga 500 Plus. If we look in floppy drives, we can see we've just got the one drive defined. And if I just go on the drop down here, you can see normally you would specify it as a three and a half inch double density drive, possibly a high density drive. In this case, we're using FB for floppy bridge and we've got it set to accurate. Now, you may well get away with fast, um, compatible turbo, but um, I'm running with accurate for now just because I know that will certainly work. Here we've got the drawbridge driver, so this is the floppy bridge or drawbridge, whatever, and that's currently set to the Arduino, so that's suitable for the Rob Smith interface. If we were using Grease Weasel, then we'd set it to Grease Weasel and a Supercard Pro. I've not tried one, but uh, obviously if you had one of those, you'd set it to that. In this case, we're just going to focus on the Rob Smith Arduino, and that's basically all you need to do. Um, I've left the floppy drive emulation speed set to 100% compatible. You may be able to change it and increase the performance slightly. I'm not sure actually whether that will impact the, um, the floppy bridge or the drawbridge uh, emulation or whether that just applies to floppy uh, images. But either way, for uh, <laughs> erring on the side of caution, we'll just leave it at 100% compatible. 
Okay, no hard drives to find on this image, uh, although you could have some if you needed, and uh, no expansions, no RTG, I and mean, it, it really is stock spec. So having established all of that, so we'll start that up. Uh, it usually takes just a few seconds whilst it's checking to see whether it can find the drawbridge interface or the floppy bridge interface. And um, hopefully it will. <laughs> There you go. And I don't know if you heard that, but that was the uh, the floppy drive clicking in true Amiga fashion, even though it's not an Amiga drive. But um, nonetheless, it'll click away just as if it were. So I've got a copy of Buggy Boy here. Just in case we were to corrupt it, I've taken a working copy of it. I'm going to pop that into the drive, just so you can see we're not cheating here. OK into the floppy drive it goes okay there we go and that's booting okay so bear in mind of course it's going to be roughly the same speed as an original stock amiga so uh, don't expect it to be fast okay here we go so competition pro joystick Okay, that's fine, that works. So we'll punch out of that. Okay, and we'll just try one more. So just to make sure that wasn't a fluke. So if we just reset this with no floppy disk in the drive. Okay, back to our workbench 1.3 or uh, kickstart 1.3 ROM splash screen. So this time we're gonna go for Workbench 1.3 again, just using a working copy. So we'll pop that into the drive. Okay, there we go. Okay, there you go. Familiar site of Workbench 1.3. And we'll go for an old classic. Okay, there you go. So if you're running on any supported platform with Amiberry 4.1.5 onwards, and obviously the later the version, the more stable it's likely to be in some of the earlier versions, there were a few issues. We're only scratching the surface here, incidentally, with this quick demo. Obviously, there's lots more that under normal circumstances you'd ideally want to be able to do, like formatting the disks and whatever, but I'm not going to show you all of that at the moment. It's probably worth looking back through some of the other videos on the channel. Have a look at the one with the Grease Weasel. It's very similar in terms of the way that it works. So really, if you can do it with one, you can probably do it with the other general terms and as i mentioned earlier it will also run with a slightly modified version of win uae so if you want to run it on a windows platform as opposed to a linux platform that should work fine too and actually there there's some additional software available for windows which will allow you to read floppy disks write them out to adfs read adfs and write them back out to floppy disks so that could be useful there are some tools available for linux they're um possibly not as comprehensive. Okay, so what's particularly interesting about this, perhaps if you've got an A500 Mini, as I said earlier, it's currently gonna be running version 3.3 of Ami Berry at the time of making this video at least. If Retro Games Limited were to release a firmware update which patched up Ami Berry to a later version, then in theory, 
it should be possible to connect one of these modified drives and boot from real floppy disks, which I think would be pretty cool. Anyway, there you go. Did say it was just a short video and uh, hopefully that was of some interest here. Okay, guys, I will catch you on the next one. Cheers for now.